Okay, good morning, y'all. I can't. Mikhail, you got to turn that down for a second. You got to turn that down for a second. Yeah, that's fine. I've been picking at my face, y'all. I had like, excuse me, a blackhead right here. Like my pores are just ridiculous right now. So I've been picking at it. My hair is starting to <laughs> curl up, stop. My hair is curling up, so I look crazy. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, I know half y'all don't know I'm live right now, and that's fine. Shouldn't you be working? In all honesty. Peeking in my face. Okay, so right now I am moisturizing my face with the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Face Lotion. Because you always have to moisturize your face before you start your foundation routine. moisturize to where I want it and now I'm going to prime my skin and I'm priming my skin with the J cat beauty fresh dewy primer hey Shay so I'm going on with the primer right now And like I said, the primer is J Cat's Beauty H2O Fresh Dewy Hydrating Oil Free Primer. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this worked into my skin. All right, so now that I have my face moisturized and primed, I'm going to take a little bit of setting powder. The setting powder that I'm using is from Shop Miss A. So it's this little setting powder right here. And I'm just gonna take a makeup sponge and I'm gonna put a little bit of powder on my brows. Hey, good morning, honey. Putting a little bit of powder on my brows just to kind of give me a better base to work with when I start my brows. Did you put all that primer and moisturizer on your face? More than likely, if your brow product is not smudge proof, um, it will smudge and it'll make it harder to work with your brows when you're trying to create them. So putting powder on it kind of takes away some of that moisture and it just helps you to better be able to hold your product in place. All right, so I know somebody asked me the other day about my brow routine and I had already done it, so I'm gonna do it now. I am using this Kiss Professional Brow Pencil. This is in the shade Dark Brown. 
I probably could go up a shade, but I do like my brows to have like a little bit of tint to them. And so what I'm doing is I'm just following my natural brow line, which is here because it's already carved out. Even if you didn't know where your natural brow line is or where it starts, you could always do the three point method. And that would show you where you need to start as far as your brows. Yeah, I love shopping say. Everything, um, there's actually a store here and everything in the store is really just a dollar. So I usually go and clean up on their brushes and sometimes the powders, depends on what kind of liner they have, I might get liners too. So I'm just following my natural arch down. Okay. I Like I said, I was just, I'm doing it to kind of test out your theory to see how well it does. Um, but also because, like I said, Facebook is getting like to a point to where they restrict you from saying certain things. So I want to have that freedom. So that's fine. I know today probably uh, it won't do like numbers today. And that's okay because... Not a lot of people know I'm doing this live right now, so. All right, so I filled it into my desired consistency. I'm just taking the brush now, and I'm going from where I started with the line, and I am pulling the line up. So that same line that I created on the bottom, I'm now taking my pencil and just kind of pulling the line up. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just drawing a semi-harsh line on the bottom. Then I'm pulling the hair down and I'm gonna draw another line across the top, making sure that I stay inside of my hairline. And I can tell y'all right now, my brows are not gonna be twins. They're probably gonna be more so sisters because um, I've been getting them arched or waxed at the at the place and it's been like two or three different people doing them so the more I even try and get them to grow back I just can't stand to have like that bushy look so I go and get them arched anyway okay I was at a stoplight I'm driving over so I'm chiming in okay okay no problem honey like I said I this is just very impromptu so I'm just trying to see, like I said, what we talked about the other day, see what kind of results it yields. Okay, I think I'm gonna take that up a little bit more. Yeah. All right, so that is it for brows. Um, let's see. I'm gonna use my NYX concealer. And I'm going to use this little flat brush, flat brush that I got from Shop Miss A. This is the E113 brush. I'm going to go ahead and clean up my brows.
Okay. I would say when, you, when you're trying to clean up your brows, start with very little product. That way it's easier to work with. And then as you create your foundation for um, like your line when you're tracing it, then you can add more product to cover the rest of your lid as you go. But if you start with a little bit first, you can always go back and add more if you need to add more. If you start with a lot, and you don't really need that much, then, you know, it could become problematic because your makeup will start running over. So, always start with a little, then go back and add more. I guess I kind of feel like I take the salt method with it. Like, once you add so much salt to a dish, you know, you can't really come back from adding too much salt. But if you add a little bit at a time and then kind of see how it looks or you know, what it tastes like or whatever, then you can kind of go from there, I guess. That's my idea. Okay. And then I'm just taking the concealer and I'm pulling the rest of it down. I'm gonna pat it into my lid. Add a little bit more to cover my mobile lid over here. And then, <laughs> and then uh, I'm just going to conceal the middle I was actually thinking about just doing like a natural kind of beat but I don't know should I do color I was just gonna do like a natural a natural look with a bold lip today if I should do color instead okay so that is on all right what do I need where's my little brush thingy thingy all right so now that that's on I am taking this Luxie 209 large shader brush and I am just going to buff this in to make sure that my surface is even, it's flat, I don't have any creasing. This just allows you the ability to kind of spread the, the makeup out. And if you've used too much of the product, it allows you to pack it in and get it evenly distributed across your whole eye. So that's what I'm doing right now. See how it looks like a lot smoother? All right, so I'm gonna take that same setting powder that I use for my brows, dip my brush in it, just tap it off a little bit. And now I'm going to set the concealer. And I'm just setting it to prepare it for my eyeshadow. So 
So when you're doing this, the way you know you're doing it right is if you start off, you see how this side is kind of shiny and now this side is a little bit, um, looks a little matte. That's how you know you've covered everything that you need to cover as far as your lid space. So you should definitely be going from the shiny look to a matte look. I look cute, son. Mm -hmm. Already? I haven't done nothing. Yeah, I got a bone to pick with you, too. Oh, not a bone. I don't appreciate you whooping my dog. Oh, how you know I whooped him? Oh, they snitched on you. Dang, they, they, need to, they need to shut up. He was trying to pee in the house. Oh, he just pooped. In the house? Mm hmm Oh, my gosh. I took him outside. He sat in the grass, right? Yeah. I started jumping on the trampoline. He still sat in the grass. I'm like, okay, he got up and left he be doing it. He get outside and he get lazy. I, I go in the kitchen and he's sitting on it. Oh, that's gross. I moved him, pick it up, and he sat back in the spot. He started crying. He started crying because he knew he was in the room. Yeah, he knew he was wrong. He knew he was wrong. I just throw him across Okay. The All right, y'all. So that is, that's in I'm good. Gonna, I'm going to have to stay up here because he's going to be off the floor. I got to sleep. Okay. So typically at this point, I will start in with my my eyes. I'm actually not. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into my foundation. Um, the foundation that I'm using is the Black Opal's um, True Color Foundation. I am the shade Truly Topaz. This color is the closest color, if not a spot on match for my summer shade. I say summer shade because, you know, your skin does change colors um, between seasons. So you should never have just one solid color for your foundation. So, you know, during the summertime, our skin gets a little bit darker. So you should have a foundation that complements your summer complexion. And then in the wintertime, you know, your skin usually lightens back up. So you should, of course... Um, have something for that as well. So this truly so fast, like I said, is my summer shade. So I'm kind of just wiping it on and then um pushing the brush back and forth to try and give it like a more stippling motion. Actually, let me stop before I do that because I've been working on these two little spots on the side of my face because I picked at bumps, which I shouldn't have. So I'm putting correcting uh, cream on it. This is the orange. I could probably get away with using the salmon, but because the spots are so dark, I'm using the orange. And I'm using my index, or I lied. I'm using my ring finger because your ring finger acts more or has more of a brush feel than any of your other fingers. So using my ring finger to kind of just pop that in. And then I'm gonna go back. I always forget I have these two small um, dots over here. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna lay my foundation on top of it. I'll check out the powder, what's your, um, I think warm, but I have like yellow and golden undertones. I would probably say more yellow than golden for me. Okay. So like that, if y'all can see, that's kind of like, it's coming together now. a little bit of this and I'm gonna rub my forehead it's more neutral yeah 
If you don't have concealer, you can always use your foundation shade um, as your base for your eyeshadows. All right, so that same brush that I concealed with under my eyes, or I'm sorry, I lied, under my brows, I'm gonna use the same brush to kind of carve out the top of my brows here. Give it a little more definition. I don't use too much foundation on my forehead. Um, just simply because I don't feel like it needs as much coverage as my face. Like, I want to look made up, but I don't want to look too made up, if that makes sense. I know some people, you know, they kind of go heavy on the forehead area. I still want my makeup to look very natural, so I don't go, I don't go too heavy on my forehead. All right, so now that that is on, I'm going to take another brush from Shop Miss A. This is the stippling brush. This is the um, F3 brush. Who is that, T? Hey, T. So what I'm doing is I'm just pushing the product in, making sure I get it everywhere, making sure I don't see any of those lines from the foundation brush that I used. The foundation brush is good to use to apply your foundation. This is the foundation brush. It's good to apply your foundation. It's better to go behind it with something like a stippling brush or maybe even a beauty or a body blender to kind of push the product in because using a foundation brush will sometimes leave you streaky. So you can always just go back in and use a stippling brush to give you more of like a photo finish look. Y'all, this ponytail did not last me no time at all. Literally, like my hair is Waving back up. Ponytail didn't didn't last me no time. I'm gonna have to take it out. Okay. So I have been using, at least for this specific look anyway, the Stay Matte Rimmel um, concealer. So let's go ahead and. Conceal or should we jump into the eyes? Do we want to highlight and contour or jump into the eyes? I don't typically have a lot of fallout, so I think I'm gonna keep the eyes kind of neutral today because I want to wear a red lip for whatever reason. I don't know, but I do want to wear a red lip today. I'm just feeling like a red lip. We got five in live. Oh yeah. If we have people here, y'all please give a thumbs up. Um, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and just get into the highlight because I do know that I wanna do a natural look today. All right, so the Rimmel concealer. Now here's a, a little tip about concealer, and this is just in all honesty. In all honesty, this is probably all that you need for concealer. You don't technically have to drag it all the way out, like past your eye or to the corner of your eye. Reason for that being is because when you go to work in your concealer, if you're using some kind of a beauty blender or even a brush, the concealer is going to spread. Naturally, it's going to spread. So to have more, to have more, I guess it would, in my opinion, it would only be for coverage reasons. Because once you get that beauty blender and you start to blend, you're moving your hand outward. So all of this you're taking with you. 
So you don't technically need to, you know, like do one of these numbers. That's not technically what you need to do. Um, but I do think it's a preference. I do it both ways sometimes. Sometimes I leave just a little bit and then sometimes I drag it out like this. Um, usually when I do the drag out method, I try to make sure I don't go past the corner of my eye. In the event that I do, I always conceal it down so so it still looks um, natural. I want it to look like skin. So that is there. All right, that's all I'm gonna put on that. I'm gonna take my little brush here. I've been using a brush, um, this Eco Tools brush. I don't know, it's their large shadow brush. So technically it's for eyeshadow, but I use it to blend out my concealer. And I am just patting this in. and you want to pat to where you no longer see lines of demarcation so you want to just keep patting I'm bringing the concealer down towards my smile line because I notice I'm starting to get like a smile line and I don't want that to crease when I finish up my makeup. So for me, I feel like the best thing to do is to conceal it and then put powder over it so I don't have any creasing right here in my mouth area. So I'm just patting this in Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit more for extra coverage. And then I'm going to pat that in. Just look up towards the ceiling so you can get like right under your eye. I for sure have, like that's my worst spot I think on me is because I know I have more of a tendency to wrinkle or crease under my eye. Absolutely hate that, but it is what it is. So what I'm doing is just highlighting the places that the light will hit naturally on me. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's very simple, very easy. Um, contour, or I'm sorry, the highlight shade is usually about one to two shades lighter than your complexion shade, which I've already laid down my complexion shade. So for me, this shade would probably be two shades lighter. So I'm getting that all worked in. Now, I know it looks a little crazy right now, but of course, like I always say, you have to trust the process. Oh, thanks, Shay. All right, so that's blended into where I want it. So the way to actually have your summer skin pop into where it like looks very natural is when you go to contour. Usually when you go to contour, your contour shade is either 
one to two shades darker than your complexion shade or two to three shades. Depends on how you like your contour, how chiseled you like your face. So for me, I'm only going to do one shade darker than my complexion shade. With me doing only one shade darker, that makes it look more natural. Like if I were to step away and do maybe two shades darker, it's going to give me that chiseled look. I mean, because I don't want to go for the chisel look, I want that kind of summer glowy look. I'm only doing one shade away from my actual complexion shade. Okay, so I'm going to take my little brush here. Oh, yeah, let me set my um under eye right quick before it starts creasing. I almost forgot. I'm going to take my contour brush. This is actually a contour brush, but I find it to be a lot more helpful as a highlight brush or a powder brush. I'm just trying to tap off the excess. This is the reason why I find it more helpful because it literally, like, look, it cuffs my eye. It gets, like, right in the... You see how it like fits right in the, the crease of my nose? And boom, that's how it's done. So I know this is supposed to be a contour brush. And it still can be, but I just find it to be so much more helpful as a powder brush when I'm trying to set my face. So just a little tip for y'all, if you don't already do that. I mean, your brushes can double just depending on how you use them, what you use them for. Okay. Just putting a little extra powder up here. All right, I'm cool with that. All right, so now I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just moving the contour shade back and forth. Circular motions, not to pass, not to pass my jawbone. So I'm just doing some dabbing motions to get it all blended. Back and forth motions on my face. You could always do the figure three, which is to swirl and work your way down. I always pull my hair into my face when that happens. So for me, like the dabbing motion works a little bit better you have to remember that when you're contouring you are looking to bring those shadows together so you're actually looking to connect the highlight to the contour that way it doesn't there's no separation it's just like i said again about hiding those lines of demarcation pretty much So now that I got that blended in, I'm gonna go back in with my brush that I used for foundation. And I am just, so remember my highlight was here and my contour started here. This is where they, they married or they met. So I am just bringing those together to where I don't see any lines of demarcation. I don't see any transfer. It looks very, very smooth. Now I'm doing the same thing for my forehead. Oh, 
All right, so that is done. Let's work into these eyes right quick. Let's see. What color is this? Um, all right, we'll try this. Actually, let me find my, hold on. Boom, this is the one I want. All right, so I'm gonna use my Morphe palette. This Morphe palette is the 35R. This is more of like a neutral palette. So that is what I'm gonna use because I wanna stay along the lines of neutral because of the lip that I wanna wear. So for my transitional shade, I'm trying to find something that looks relatively light. Probably this one. I'm using that large shadow brush again that I used to initially set my eye. I'm using that right now. And I am working this. So this is the this is the one that I'm using. And I'm holding it upside down, but it's this one. So if I turned it this way, it would be like that. That's actually the right way. So I'm just going to pat the color in. I said pack, just so y'all know, not pat. So I'm packing it in. Packing it in just allows you to put the most color onto the lid at one time. That's gonna give you the most color payoff. So getting it packed in and then, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and start working it in. So I'm just doing some circular motions. So with circular motions, what you're doing when you do circular motions is you're blowing the color out. So if you want the color to be more prominent across your eye, you're gonna do circular motions because that's gonna make it cover more of your eye. If you want the color to be focused on one specific spot, you want to do windshield wiper motions. So back and forth like that. Back and forth, that means that this, wherever I'm putting my brush down at, that's where it's going to have that the color. Like it's, it's going to be concentrated in that one area, if that makes sense. Anytime I'm doing circular motions, that means I'm blowing the color out. So that means the color is gonna be more spread across my face. I'm not saying my face, but my eye. So once you get to a point to where you know, yes. Once you get to a point to where you know um, pretty much what you need to do or how you want your look to go, you'll know if you need to do circular motions, if it's time to kind of blow it out, you'll learn it over time. You will learn it over time. If you wanna pack more of the color in, then you take your brush and you focus on that one area and you pat, pat, pat. I'm gonna get all the male attention now. Oh God. I didn't know that. So. And then I would say just kind of work back and forth between both eyes to determine um, your color consistency. So if you start off on one eye, just kind of, 
I'm not saying like remember how many swipes or how many dabs or pats you did in in a specific shade because you won't be able to remember that. That's like too much. But definitely pack your color in and then take your time and look at your eyes and see is one lighter than the other? Is one darker than the other? Do I need to go higher or lower? You know, just to, to make sure that they match as closely as possible. Um, if you are a like brow girl and you like to put highlight under your brow, I would always say leave a little bit of space for your brow shade. Sometimes I wear a brow shade, sometimes I don't, so. All right, so I think that color is to my liking, my consistency, so I'm fine with that. I'm gonna go in with a brown now, and I am just going to smudge the brown over the mobile part of my lid. And this part right here is the mobile part of your lid, so that little space. That's the mobile part. Um, thank you, I think. So I'm just packing that in. Packing it in. And I'm only packing it on the mobile part. Once I've packed it in, then I start to see that the, the color is actually staying where I want it to stay. I can take that color up to meet that second color that I that added, the transitional shade, to blend them together. That way, there's no separation. It doesn't look muddy. And my eye still looks very neutral. Do you see what I mean? Like this is my transitional shade, this is the brown, and it's slowly transitioning into the transitional shade. right so i'm gonna do the same thing on this other side um what else do i like to do in my free time other than makeup i love spending time with my kids they are like really funny characters i'm doing circular motions right now guys because i'm trying to cover and blend at the same time and then I'm doing the back and forth windshield wipe, wiper motions on the bottom. And that is so I can cover more of my lid here. Um, yeah, I like to spend time with my kids. And then I'm just working that color up into the transitional shade. Blend it out really well. I always start packing in the middle because that's where I want the most coverage. And then I kind of do my windshield wiper or the back and forth motions to get it to the consistency that I want. So that is that. The reason I use this little sponge is because I do have a hooded lid and I know that, you know, your fingers have oils in them, they have, um, minerals and things like that in them so if you hold your take your finger and you hold your eye it's going to leave a fingerprint and sometimes that takes the makeup away so i'd rather use the sponge so i have that like little line instead of a fingerprint and i can easily take my brush and pat it back out so my makeup isn't gone from that particular spot if that makes sense so if I want it to be a little bit extra, or if you just wanted to like jazz up your, your eyes, you could always take a shimmer shade and you could just run it across your eye here. Oh, let me find one. Instead of saying it, let's find one. Let's see, this one, what does that look like? Uh, let's do this guy. I don't know what he looks like. I haven't dipped in him. So you can take a shimmer shade and just run it.
across your mobile lid, right? And I'm just doing it on my mobile lid. That's it, nowhere else. So now you have like a little shimmer on your eye. Like if you wanted a little bit more attention to it. Um, if you wanted to keep your eye neutral, like how I had it before I added the shimmer shade, I would say maybe try adding the shimmer shade in your tear duct. And that would draw a little bit more of attention to your eye because you have something shiny there, if that makes sense, you guys. And I'm doing it very lightly to make sure that it's blended. So I start in the middle, um, whichever way you prefer to work it, whether you want to work towards the back and then move to the front. But I'm doing it with a flat shader brush or shadow brush. And I'm being sure to only cover my mobile lid. All right, so now I'm going to take my liner and I'm using this e.l.f. liner, the liquid liner, and I'm going to go ahead and line my eyes. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going to be out of the comments for a second. Eyeliner is not something, not liquid liner, that I can talk through. So, small liner today, or a small little baby wing today. I'm going to do the second, uh, same thing with the second eye. Um, I would say with liquid liner, the best thing to do is I always stick my um, brush in, kind of swirl around the top to get rid of the excess. And then I start to apply that way. Just because if you come straight out of the bottle with it and you're trying to apply, it's going to have more on that, the felt tip than you may want. I'm okay, you're going to have to turn that off because I'm on YouTube and I'll get copyright um, notification. Sorry, y'all. My baby was trying to come in and talk to me, but he got music on. And I know YouTube is really sensitive about um, music, so. Hey, 
Hey, Kathleen. Good morning, honey. All right, cool. So that is that. I'm gonna take some of the Mario Badescu skin. This is the facial spray with aloe herbs and rose water. Spraying that on my face. I'm gonna take my stippling brush again and I'm just gonna push it in. Yeah, I was trying to go for the natural look today. All right, so I think that's pushed into the way I like it. Now, the way to set this to where you it does not move, um, it becomes sweat proof, is you take, after you spray the Mario Badescu in, you're gonna take your setting powder and you are going to stipple that into your face with a powder brush. And I'm doing very little at a time. I don't wanna to do too much at a time, so I'm doing like very little at a time because I don't wanna change the consistency of the makeup. And I'm setting my whole face with this. So what it also does, if you can see, is it takes away some of that glare that made my face look dewy. It takes that away a little bit. Never thought about doing that. There you go. It takes away that dewy look. And it gives you more of a, a matte, natural skin look. Now they do have, you can use like, you know, finishing powders, um, something closer to skin tone, but this is just personally what I've been using probably for like the last week and a half for my face routine, well, my summer routine anyway. All right, so now I am going to blush. So with blush, I'm going to use this little guy right here and let's see let me see what brush I'm gonna use for okay we'll use this guy all right so this one has a mirror in it so I'm gonna turn it upside down so I'm gonna use this guy right here and I'm seriously just gonna do one two that's it that's more than enough, and it's probably too much. So when I go to put my blush on, cheeks, one, two, one, two. And I'm pressing very lightly. Like, if you can see, that's a lot there. So what I do after that is I am going to wipe this brush off. Like, I have a towel right here, so I'm going to wipe it off. And then I'm just going to spread the blush out so the brush the blush goes right between your contour and your highlight shade To blend it all out, I'm going back with my stippling brush. 
and blend in everything out. I haven't put any more product on this since having um, the foundation on it. So seriously, just blending out what's already there. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put some glue on my lashes so we can get that popping. And then I think I can probably still make a red lip work with this, we'll see. Got my lash glue on, I'm gonna set that down. With my lashes, I put the um, stick in, pull it out, again, swirl, but I swirl a little bit deeper in the bottom, not so much towards the top. If you swirl towards the top, you have to remember that this is glue. So what's gonna happen is the glue is gonna start getting tacky at the very top of your bottle. And then you'll like be fighting with the glue or to get the stick in. So you want to swirl the product off a little bit more towards the bottom. I'm going to put it back in. So I didn't do this whole punching method because when you do this, you're letting air go into the bottle. So you're drying out your glue. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to take some mascara from Butter London. This is the Power Up Mascara. And I am going to put a little bit of mascara on my natural lashes. Now for me, anytime I put mascara on my natural lashes, I always go back behind with like some type of spoolie and I just run my finger over my lash with the mascara in it. Um, some of the mascara that I use is, it comes out with a clump. I don't know about y'all. Like I haven't come across one mascara yet that doesn't clump. So sometimes it comes out with a little clump and when it does, I know that once I blink, that clump is potentially gonna go under my eyes. So to kind of stop that, I'll take a spoolie and I'll just take it and I'll hold my lash and I'll pull the spoolie under my lash to get rid of the clump. And I got tons of these, so. All right. Blowing on my lashes to kind of get the glue tacky, let it dry. So with the lashes, I'm taking my mirror. I'm going to put the mirror directly under my chin. And I'm doing that because I want to see where my lash line is, where my hairline is. And I want to take the lashes and I'm going straight down. And I know my fingers are kind of big, so you probably can't see, but I'm going... Okay, that's better. I'm going straight down with this. And I'm making sure that the fake lash or the false lash is above my real lashes. And the way I do that is by keeping my head under the mirror, keeping my chin right under the mirror angled, and then placing that lash going straight down. So the lash is on. I'm gonna do the same thing with the second one kind of bending it to kind of shape it for my eye. Same thing. I always start by connecting in the middle and then move out towards the ends. And I'm wiggling it back and forth just to make sure it is secure on my eye. You wiggle it back and forth, it'll tell you how tacky it is. You can kind of feel like that space, um, if there's any space in the lash. I don't really know how to explain the space. I guess the space, the best way to explain it is like when you put the lash on, if there's a place where the lash hasn't adhered to, you'll feel a little space and that'll let you know, okay, I need to push my lash 
a little bit more or maybe it's not secured properly and you'll go back and you'll adjust so lashes are on um i actually think i want to go a little bit darker on my blush i know it's supposed to be natural but uh Try not to put too much. Okay, I think that's good. All right. So taking my brown lip liner pencil by NYX. It's like small, but I have about seven of these in my drawer. So I'm not worried about running out. And I'm actually going to over um, line my lips. So usually I line my lips right under, like right here. But today I'm going to take it to the brightest point of my lip, which is that my lip line. And that's where I'm going to line at. I'm doing it lightly because I'm, I'm going to follow up with the brush to kind of spread this liner out. All right, so liner is on. I'm gonna take this lip brush and I am going to spread the liner out and take it over my lip line. So if you have like smaller lips, um, this would be something you could do to make your lips appear more fuller. I don't think I really have smaller lips. I, I just feel like I'm starting to like this look better. So lined it. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking my brush and I'm pulling the lip liner into my lip, which is called feathering. So I'm just feathering it in. It's just another way to say you're blending out your lip liner. I could wear my lips like this, but I did say I wanted to wear red today. So I'm gonna see if I can pull that off. Anytime I wear red, I always wear Heartbreak from Smirk Co. I just feel like Heartbreak is my perfect red, red shade. Um, it's either Heartbreak or um, Ruby Woo, which I feel like never gets old. So I am taking Heartbreak from Smirk Co. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply. And this is a matte lipstick, so Lashes are your damn for her. Lashes take time. When I first started um, wearing lashes, I hated it. And then I decided I didn't want to hate it anymore. And I literally sat in my makeup chair for an hour. I went to the beauty supply. I bought maybe 10 packs of false lashes. And I literally sat in my makeup chair for an hour and I did not move until I had it down. All right, so I have to work this in with my brush and then I'm gonna go back and blend it out. Where did my lip liner brush just go to? There it is.
So I know I have to work with this kind of quickly because like I said, it is matte. But right now I'm kind of telling the lipstick where I want it to go instead of just letting it go anywhere. So I'm gonna add another layer to kind of finish it up. And I'm just gonna do this back and forth until it's the consistency that I want it to be. Trying to decide if I'm taking this, how high up I'm taking this. Cause I want my lips to be like super red. All right, I'm gonna take this all the way up. And then I think I'm just gonna reline again to give it more dimension. All right, so I just relined it to give it a little bit more dimension. Gonna take that liner and I'm patting it in. Gonna take my concealer brush. I haven't added anything else to it. I'm just gonna clean up that line. Now the only thing left to do is highlighter. I'm gonna take this highlighter here. I think this one is also from Pretty Vulgar. And this one is more so along a gold kind of color, but it still stays within skin tone for me. And I'm gonna highlight cheeks.
chin. And then the last thing I do is my nose contour. Just gonna put a little bit of that same um, concealer that I use to carve out my face. Just a little bit on the back of my hand. Taking a very small, narrow brush. Hey, cousin. And I am going to, so I'm starting from here and I'm bringing this contour down. I always start from like the top because that's really where the bridge of your nose starts at. But then it also, I guess, depends on like how you want your contour to look for your nose. Um, I always go for smaller, kind of make my nose look a little bit smaller, but it's definitely just my preference. So if you take your concealer up into your brow, you'll find that it kind of narrows you out right here and it gives your nose more of a narrow kind of look or a slimmer kind of look, thinner, whatever word you want to use. Usually if you take any, if you start anywhere within the eyes, it's going to make your nose look smaller. So if you start like down here somewhere, you're really only narrowing out this part. But if you start anywhere from your tear duct or up, it's going to narrow out your whole face. Trust me, it's going to make a difference. And just use a little bit at a time. Like I said, I use kind of like the salt method when you're cooking. Start with a little bit, and if you need to add more, you can always add more later. And then you just kind of blend it out. Right, so I'm gonna go take a little bit of powder because I'm, I'm gonna set this. Not gonna leave it on long, just enough to where it actually catches the powder. And then I can wipe it off. So that was, for me, that was on long enough. Got my proud powder pressed in, so I'm good. Now I can go and finish my highlight, spray my face down. So now I can go and highlight my nose. So for my nose, a little bit right there on the tip, my nose. And then I'm going to put just a little bit, and I'm squeezing the brush, and I'm going to put just a little bit right in the middle. You know? And then I open it back up. And right along my forehead. And then again, I'm going to take my stippling brush, kind of buff out the highlighter so it's not just packed and sitting in one place. I didn't use my fan brush again because it still has product in it, and I don't want to over-highlight my face. And I was like, what? Over-highlight your face? I don't know. I just feel like you can over-highlight your face. And I'm gonna spray. So I'm gonna spray with Maria Badescu again. And then I'm gonna set with the Morphe setting spray. So 
and again with the stippling brush just to push everything in. And that is pretty much it. I'm gonna go brush down my hair. Ponytail gonna be popping out. I brush it down and give me some baby hairs going. That is pretty much it. That's the look. Very natural, summer-ish, natural vibe. I don't know. I feel like I wanna add some liner to my eye. I'm not sure. I might. I can find my liner. Let's see. What do you think about? Ooh, white gonna make it pop. Let's add a little white. That is black, Rita. Bye. And I want you white. <laughs> all right, so let's make this pop a little bit. Since we got all these neutral shades. Little white liner, make it pop, make my eye look a little open. Okay, I think I'm cool with that. And I'm gonna put a little bit of this highlight in my tear duct. Just highlight it under my brow bone. I feel like I need to redefine. Just trying to redefine my brows a little bit. And I'm gonna set my brows. I'm using Color uh, Pops Brow Gel to set. Just brushing it through, getting it all lined up there. Okay, I think that's it. All right, that's the finished look. That is it. So, that's it, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for staying with me. I really appreciate everybody. I'm about to go and brush my hair up. I will post pictures to Instagram. And I will also, um, of course, post pictures on Facebook and um, list product details. 
but I really uh, appreciate y'all for joining me. I'm going to do this more because I am trying to do something for research purposes. Um, and if it works, then I will continue to do more of this. So just kind of to let y'all know, I'm going to be all over the board, but I'll definitely keep you informed on what platforms I'll be on. I hope y'all have a great day and I will see y'all later. Oh, I need to take a picture for my, whatchamacallit.